How's it going everybody? This is Alex, KE8FMQ, and I wanted to show you a antenna upgrade that I have today. Uh, around Christmas, I had quite a few Amazon gift cards, so uh, I actually bought this one on Christmas Day, and it took about two or three weeks to get here, but this is the Diamond NR22L, and it is a big antenna. This total length of this thing, we're to say 96.9 inches, that's over 8 feet. Um, this is a full wavelength VHF antenna. Uh, it, sa it says it does, well, it says UHF there, but I'm pretty sure that that's talking about the UHF connector at the bottom of it. It's monoband, two meter. Um, it came in two pieces disconnected right here. And this top piece, it goes all out of the picture, but it's actually just about as long as the bottom piece as well. And this is just a little connector that has little. Uh, set screws that take a hex key. Um, on the bottom, I got a few pictures of that, but it's basically just a big piece and it comes out into a female PL259 connector that I'm not for sure that may, may be a uh, SO230 239. I think that might be the female version of that. But anyway, I had some connectors then and, and I got it to work. So I got a few pictures over here. Minimize. Minimize this over here too. Here they are. Nope, that's my phone. Here they are. Yeah, I had it open. Um, and we'll just kind of go from the top and start at the top and go to the bottom. Uh, I took a few of these pictures a long time ago, but it should more or less chronicle the uh, the installation of it that I did. So. That, I'm digging a hole in my yard for a mast. I'm planning on putting a 4x4 in there. Uh, I'm not cementing it in or anything. I do rent my house, so anything that I put up, i got to take with me later. Uh, and it is not in there terribly deep. It's actually kind of wobbly. I've got so much on the top side of the ground. Um, but here I am out one night when it was still snowing. I had a headlamp on and everything trying to get this thing mounted. There's another picture of the hole. Shovel for scale shovel in the hole so you can see it, it it's only about a foot foot and a half deep it's not really all that deep at all um here's a uh, picture of the mast and uh i think i got a picture here of what i, I put a two by four on top of it not this two by four i was just using it to tamp around the around the mast there's another picture of it I got some better pictures in the daytime here in a minute. This is what I actually used to mount the antenna to. I used these U-bolts and I just took this 2x4 and I just screwed it right into that 4x4. So uh, it's not the prettiest thing but it does get the antenna off the ground just a little bit. I could have used a longer 2x4 but this is just what I had available to me immediately. I really wanted to get this thing mounted that night. So the U-bolts are just in this little bracket that is screwed into the side of this and I have room on each side of the 2x4 to get a wrench in there and tighten these things down and actually ended up working pretty good. <clears throat> Here's a picture of it. One that's actually mounted vertically. You can see this tree in the background. Um, I got it on there pretty good. I did wrap it up in black tape and I put a little bit of uh, Gorilla Tape there to sort of offset the size. And also I thought that maybe this tape, tapey surface, this rubbery tapey surface would uh, provide a better uh, clamp for these U-bolts here so it wouldn't slide up and down if uh, these started to back off just a little bit or I didn't get them just as tight as I should have. So I put this tape around it and also this bottom part of the tape I used to kind of seal up the connection uh, wherever the cable comes into it. So there's another pretty bad picture. Um, this cable, I'll talk about it here in a second, but for right now, all you should know is that it comes out into a factory-made PL259, and then I have a barrel, and then that goes into the antenna. So, uh, yeah, that's about all there is to say about that. Now, here's a picture of the old antenna that I was using. I think there's a few of these strung in and out. I just made this out of coat hangers, and you can see it's getting pretty rusty standing out there, and it's in terrible placement just right beside my house. Actually, most of the towers that I want to hit, most of the repeaters, they are on the other side of this house. But I have uh, got several signal reports that this is actually a pretty clear reception. And also, I made this before I realized that the other side of the dipole was actually for UHF. So it's not tuned correctly at all. 
this is uh, basically only tuned for VHF and the other sides like I say I didn't know what I was doing so I taped them to it you know just to make it look a little bit nicer I guess which was incorrect to do so here's a picture uh, I, I've just got several pictures pictures around and we can see uh, kinda how tall it is it goes all the way up I tried to line it up with this leaf right there so it goes from about there to there it's it, it's eight foot every bit of it and I've got it about 12 feet up in up in the air I don't think I've exactly measured it but I'm pretty good at eyeball and lens I'm pretty sure it's about 12 feet might be a couple inches off and here's just a picture of the mast you can see a standard 4x4 four four. I had this tape down there but it weathered off it, this has been up for about a month maybe yeah just a little bit over a month I've had it up there's another picture from another angle of it way up in the air there's another picture I know this is probably hard to see it's a another picture same thing slightly different angle the reason I didn't another reason why I didn't cement this thing into the ground is um, this is kinda just a temporary mast I'd like to get a taller one of some sort I, I've kinda looked at the telescoping mast I've looked at the fold over mast and uh, I'm not exactly sure what I want to do this is what it came in <clears throat> this is about five maybe five and a half feet long the antenna came in two two parts like I said and uh, this was inside of the tube and it had two things of uh, crinkled up paper at each end and then I just took the top of it off to get out of it there's another picture a couple more pictures here's some of the text I have one more picture it has 6.5 DB of gain and it is rated for 100 watts um, and it's tuned for 144 megahertz and there's another picture slightly better now I think here's the cable I bought 100 foot of RG8X and it feels like pretty good cable this is the first time I've ever bought cable uh, I did not need all of the 100 foot so I trimmed away what I didn't need um, I would have liked to have made my feed line a lot shorter but actually now I'm estimating that I have about 70 feet of line between my radio and uh, the bottom of the antenna so that is in no way ideal especially for VHF but uh, that's what I got at the moment and it seems to work pretty good here I'm connecting up my little UV5R to an SWR meter which in turn goes out into the antenna oh, I want to talk about these connectors for a second I needed one more PL259 connector from where I had cut this cable to go you know into my radio or whatever device I have so uh, I thought about buying some they looked a little bit pricey on the internet and they were in lots of five and I only needed one so I just went right over to Radio Shack and they had exactly what I needed they had a twist on PL259 connector and a solder on whenever I installed this I wanted to get it up in a hurry so I said well I'll put the twist on now and I'll you know put the solder one on later um, so the twist on is still on there I have not replaced it <coughs> I got this uh, Oh, I think this is a Workman SWR meter. It is. Uh, it was about twenty, twenty nine dollars, maybe twenty or twenty nine. I can't remember exactly. And it came with this one little patch cable here that was already pre made. So I've been using that. Um, I I don't think it's a good SWR meter by any means, but it's what I had at the moment. Um, and here I am testing the SWR. I think I'm doing this right. I think I'm reading it right. I put it on 146.000. I do have an offset already pre-programmed and I didn't bother to take it off. So I'm transmitting on 145.400 um, and it's going into here. And what I did is I keyed it up. I set this thing until it was going to infinity while this was on set. And then I kicked it over to SWR, got this reading and took a picture of it with my phone. And I think that that is a good reading. Um, if I'm not mistaken, then right here would be two and this is slightly underneath that so I, I I may be wrong I'm a complete novice at all this but I think that's a pretty good SWR um, so I normally don't even 
run it through the SWR meter. I normally just connect the radio right into the feed line for the antenna. And I am using a UV5R at the moment. I've got a couple of them kicking around here. That's all I have. Um, I, I would like to upgrade my radio in the future, but in my endeavors into the ham radio world, I thought that a big, good antenna may be better to start off with than you know getting a big radio and running it through a coat hanger dipole. But um, I, I, I don't even have any plans for what kind of radio I'm looking at getting. Uh, I'm, I'm really just kind of liking these UV5Rs for the moment. They're pretty, pretty simple, but I would like something that could get me some more power. As far as reception goes, um, I have gotten about, you know, my my sto my normal test is to kind of put it over on the rate on the NOAA weather frequencies, you know. And before with my coat hanger antenna, I think I could get two NOAA weather stations, and now I can get five NOAA weather stations. Now some of those, you know, they are kind of going in and out depending on which way the wind's blowing and all kinds of different factors. But I can. I, I can receive about five of them and I can definitely hear and understand three of those fives and uh, on my coat hanger antenna I could I could only really understand one well and I could get another one and I could pre pretty much make out what it was saying so I would call this a definite improvement over uh, over what I had in the receiving capabilities as far as transmitting goes um, I've gotten about the same signal reports. Uh, now this is just what other people are telling me. I've gotten about the same signal reports along with my coat hanger dipole and this uh, NR22L. And that's probably just due to the amount of power that I'm pushing through it. Um, I, I'd really need to get you know a bigger, bigger radio that can push more power or some sort of amplifier to really amplify it up. But uh, I'd probably just go for the radio first since I'd like to get into some other things as well. I think that that's the next step. So yeah, that's my last picture. Uh, this is the Diamond NR22L antenna from Diamond. And uh, I'm really enjoying it. Oh, one other thing. This is actually meant to be a mobile antenna that you would put in your car. And uh, <laughs> you'd have to have a mighty good mount to mount this onto your car. And it would look so ridiculous to have an 8-foot antenna on your car. But uh, I just decided to throw it up on a mast in my house, and that's what I'm going to use kind of for my, like, my little base station. It's, you know, it's in my walls now, so we're good with that. Anyway, this is Alex, KE8FMQ, and I uh, hope that somebody finds this informative.